Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back my dear viewers Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim All praise is due to Allah we praise him and we seek his help whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves us say none can show him guidance may the greatest peace and salutations be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam welcome back to another live edition of Askuda all the way from Mecca to Mukarrama and today is already the 25th of Ramadan and uh, it's such a beautiful time that we're all spending uh, experiencing Allah's mercy, experiencing the breeze of forgiveness and acceptance of repentance. Our phone numbers they should appear on the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to dial any of the following numbers. And also you can watch us live on NileSat or IntelSat20 or NileSat uh, and the various social media platform, my Facebook page and Salah Official, the Huda TV Facebook page and Huda TV on the YouTube. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our first caller for the day is Omar from Somalia. Assalamu alaikum Omar. Alaikum Salam, Rahmatullah, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, alhamdulillah. A lot of Somalis here in Mecca, Omar, mashallah. And a lot of Somalis who are residing in Kenya as well. Mashallah, Somalia is taking alhamdulillah. over. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, Shit, um, I have two questions, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it quick. So first, is, mm -hmm. is it permissible to, perf to perform wudu? while I am in the washroom. And the second question is, is it permissible to engage in the remembrance of Allah or read the Quran while I am on my bed without, without having performed wudu? Thank you, Omar from Somalia. First of all, it is permissible to observe wudu in the washroom, in the restroom, it doesn't matter. The problem is while you are in the washroom where there is a toilet and a commode, you're not supposed to mention the name of Allah or generally speaking to speak unless if it is necessary. But to mention the name of Allah, it is not permissible. So somebody would say, so how am I going to make Bismillah al Bismillah in the beginning of Udu as it is a highly recommended Sunnah? In this case we say, you say it without uttering the letters and the words. You say it within yourself while you're quiet. Or you can say it outside, then you step inside and you observe wudu. Then after you finish your wudu, you step outside and you say, <coughs> You say, La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la. وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله اللهم اجعلني من التوابين واجعلني من المتطهرين. Somebody would say what about غفرانك؟ Also say غفرانك since both were done in the same place. Most people now they have the sink, the basin where they make wudu is in the same place where the bathroom is. So it is okay uh, to do it inside. As far as ذكر in general. Even if you are in a state of janaba, major impurity, you have access to all kind of dhikr. La ilaha illallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Men and women, even during the state of janaba. Accordingly, if you don't have wudu, it's a lot easier. You also have access to make dhikr while you don't have wudu. And while you don't have wudu, you may recite Quran, no problem. But if you are in a state of janaba, for men particularly, and for men and women, after having an intimate relationship, other than the period for women, they are not allowed to recite Quran even by the heart. 
you gotta wait until you remove the major impurity. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad from India, welcome to Ask with Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh, I have a question uh, regarding uh, ornaments uh, for men. Uh, I was okay. uh, having doing a research on the same, and I found that Prophet uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, wore a ring. Uh, uh, so, is it is it permissible to wear a ring, and which is uh, the right way to uh, pre the precious stone, or which is the right way to wear uh, ornaments? And it is allowed for men to wear uh, ornaments in Islam. If the ring is a silver ring, like this, it is permissible. And you wear it in this finger. It is not permissible for men or women to wear rings in the middle finger. Okay? Men are not allowed to wear any gold. So what kind of adornment can they wear? Rings. Necklaces for men, haram, even if it is silver. Necklaces uh, and bracelets for uh, men are absolutely forbidden. Earrings for men are absolutely forbidden. What is permissible is to wear a ring. And it should be silver or as long as it is not gold. Barakallahu feekum. Ahmed from India. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tanzir from Bangladesh. Welcome to Ask with Tanzir. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Uh, yes, I'm fine, Sheikh. Sheikh, I have a question about uh, reciting and blowing into the palms before going to bed, reciting the three pulls. My question is, mm -hmm. should I recite the three, uh, let's say three times and blow into my hand once? Or should I uh, blow into my hands after reciting uh, the set each time? Well, your question, I'm talking about Surah Falak Nasser. Tanzir from Bangladesh is asking about the recitation of Al Muawwidat. Our brothers like to call them the three Quls because each surah of Al Muawwidat begin with Qul. Whether Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, Qul a'udhu bi Rabbi al Falaq, Qul Qul a'udhu bi Rabbi Nas. So they, you know, call them the three Quls. Okay. It is Sunnah and prescribed by the Prophet ﷺ while you are lying on your bed before falling asleep to summon your palms and to recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samadu lam yalid wa lam yunad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-falaq min shari ma khalaq wa min shari ghasiq idha waqab wa min shari nafasat fi al-uqad wa min shari hasid idha hasad Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-nas ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس This is the first time and you repeat this process three times all together three times this is the sunnah and not only that you will experience comfortable sleep, but this is a wonderful and a very powerful means of ruqya. Everybody, before you go to sleep, you should not miss this recitation of Al-Mu'awwidat. Al-Mu'awwidat, plural of Mu'awwidah. Mu'awwidah is a surah which is prescribed to be recited as means of protection against evil eye, against envy, against hasad, against sah and sorcery. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zia from South Africa. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Zia? My grandmother. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead. My, my, granny, my granny has a question. She wants to know that um, she makes too many mistakes in salah. So mm -hmm. she wants to know what must, can she do to um, to um, stop her mistakes so she can be more concentrated in Salah. What do 
Uh, what can she do? How, how old? How old is your grandma? She's seventy-five years old. MashaAllah, Allah ma barik. Uh, before I answer your question, I want to admire the way you pronounce the Arabic words. When you say salah, this is pure Arabic. MashaAllah, Zia. And I want to call you Zia, if you don't mind, because it's actually Zia, Zia, not Zia. In any case, uh, may Allah bless you and your grandmother. May Allah bless all our parents and grandparents. And sometimes... Uh, as we grow older, we tend to forget. I tend to forget a lot. So in this case, if it is something that I have forgotten, a raka or a sajda or a whole unit, I make it up, then by the end, I make two prostrations for forgetfulness. Okay? I try my best to stay vigilant, to focus on my prayer, not to get distracted. But if it happens, لا يكلف الله نفسا so I advise you to share with her and watch with her the series of the Prophet's prayer. In the series, I discussed Sujood al-Sah, when to offer Sujood al-Sah, the prostrations for forgetfulness, and for what part of the Salah. If you forget it, you have to offer Sujood al-Sah, and you still have to make it up as well, because this is a lengthy subject, mashallah. But... Uh, seek the help of Allah, ask Allah to keep you concentrating and focused in your prayer and to keep vigilant and alert whether in the prayer or outside uh, the prayers. But we know the Prophet وسلم, have forgotten once by adding extra rakas and once by making taslim after only two rakas and the prayer was four rakas. What did he do? He completed his prayer and he offered two prostrations for forgetfulness after he concluded the prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zainab from Italy, welcome to Ask Uda Zainab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak, Sheikh. I'm his family. Ramadan Mubarak to you and to your family, Zainab. May Allah bless you all. Um, um, thank you. Sheikh, please, I have prayer requests. I don't have question today. Mm -hmm. I just, I said I don't have question today. I have a prayer request. Well, if you have a specific question now, ask it because you only have one minute till the break. I said I don't have a um, question. I have prayer requests, prayer requests. Okay, what is it? Now, Almighty Allah should give me Shifa and grant me a pious offspring. I mean, may Allah grant our sister Fatima a speedy recovery and a complete Shifa. Allah Azim, Rabb al Arsh al Azim, and Yashfiyaki Shifa and may Yuadur Sakama. May Allah bless you, sister Fatima, and your family. Uh, sister Zainab, I, I'm, I'm really sorry. May Allah bless and cure. Our respected sister Zainab from Italy. Ameen. Barakallahu feekum. My dear viewers, it's time to take a short break. And inshallah, we'll see you shortly. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the second segment in today's Ask with Live all the way from Makkah al Mukarrama. And today is already the 25th of Ramadan, a few more days to go. Assalamu alaikum, Saeed from the USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have uh, two quick questions. The first one is, I bought someone from a condo through payment. So we agreed that I will be paying in two years. Then it was almost 110K USA dollar. Then when I paid like 28,000 and 500, something like that, uh, you know, the contract was two years. So the two years came, I couldn't make it. I just paid. 
28,500. Now he told me he's going to pay me back that 28,500 in the coming three months. So my question is, will I make payment? Will I make it zakar for that one? Again, I want to just like save that money and then buy another condo. How will I make a zakat for that one? My second a question, question for is, you. A question for you. You're the one who's still in the condo? No, I bought it. You do what? You bought it? Mm-hmm. Yes. You're the one who purchased the house, the condo. What is the intention yes. behind purchasing the condo? Is it for you to live in or to visit occasionally, yes. weekend, during summer? What is the purpose or investment? No, it was to leave me and my family. Okay. Then you still owe some money on the condo, right? Yeah, so it was 10, 110K. Then we were like close family that the guy who was selling. So then we agreed that, you know, I will be paying him in two years. I was making payment one and a half years. And then the contract, like the time came, like the two years almost ending. And then he said, like, you know, Said, you can't make this payment. I'm going to sell it to another, one, another person and I will give you back the money. I said, okay. So now I was thinking like, okay. And now I'm thinking buying another condo, saving this money again, and then uh, buying another one. So like now he told me he's going to give me back in three months. How will I make, will I pay Zaka or for that money? Uh, you know, there are actually too many things intermingling here. So let's mm-hmm. talk about the money which you have with you right now, regardless whether you're planning to buy another condo or you don't. This is entirely up to you. When do you normally pay your zakah? Uh, I don't have money to pay zakah. Hmm? You don't have money to pay zakah? Even before? Yes, I was... Yes. Fine. What about if I give a general answer and see what suits you? If I, Muhammad Salah, purchased a flat and on an installment over two years, three years, and I have money which is zakat, I pay zakat every year. But it is understood that if I'm in debt, I don't pay zakat on the debt, on the loan. But now, the loan or the money which I have to pay for the installment or the flat is with me, and the installment is still over a year, two years, then this money is zakatable. I should pay zakat on this money as long as it is with me. You understand? Saeed? Yes, yes, Sheikh. Yes, I'm hearing you. You understand what I said? Yes. Okay. You want to ask another question or further clarification? A little bit further clarification because like this money I was making like paying every year, like every month, 1,000 and then something like that. So, and still, you know, he didn't give me back the money, but I'm expecting to get like based on what he told me. So when I get that money on the spot, that 28,000, will I pay the zakat at that time or maybe wait another year from the day? Only when one, only when one, look, if you received a million dollars right now, you don't pay zakat on it right now. We look into your history. Are you a person who used to pay zakat? Yes. But in your case, no. You said you, you never paid zakat. You don't have money to pay zakat. For innocence. So you begin calculating from the day you receive this amount. Next year, same time according to the lunar calendar. Today is the 25th of Ramadan. 25th of Ramadan next year, I look into my position and I start paying zakat if the amount is zakat. If I have spent all the money that I have, and I ended up having less than $6,000, which is the value of 85 grams of gold, you don't owe any zakah. You don't owe any zakah. But if the money increased, even one day before the payment of the zakah, you pay the zakah on the entire amount. Barakallahu feekum, Saeed. 
from USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Baba Ghana from Nigeria. Welcome to Ask Uda. Assalamu alaikum. May Almighty Allah bless you and bless your family, entire family. Amen. May He grant you Amin. Amin. Same to you. Uh, my cousin is does Islam allow, allow marriage between AS and AS genotype? And my second question is does well, yeah, Baba Ghana, uh, does, does Baba Ghana. you say sickle cell disease? My, my dear viewer, my brother, Baba Ghana. He said, you said, does Islam allow, and we lost your voice. It started breaking up. Does Islam allow what? Marriage between AS and AS genotype. Marriage between? AS and AS genotype. Genotype, genotype. Okay, I say that. I say that does Islam allow marriage between AS and AS genotype? Genotype. Yes. I, 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 unfortunately, I'm missing the last segment. Does Islam allow marriage between whom and whom? A, AS and AS genotype. AS, uh, a person with carrier, a sickle cell carrier, and then sickle cell carrier. Is it allowed for them to? Mari. Well, if you're asking about genetics, uh, yes. then this is not the right program for it. Okay? I figure that you're asking about genetics and a couple who may have specific genes or rhesus factor that you need to consult your family doctor. Okay? But from an Islamic perspective, Ayah uh, number 23, chapter number 4, answers the question as whom you should not marry forever. al muharramat min an nisa But if, if you're asking about medical condition, rhesus factor, and genetics, this is not the right program for it. But I heard you have another question, Baba Ghana. Okay, okay. So those patients with cell disease which required drinking a lot of water to fast any medical condition where the doctor the professional physician advises the Muslim patient you cannot fast it will harm your health and you consulted another Muslim doctor and confirmed, skip fasting. Don't hurt yourself. Some people who have the ability or the uh, possibility of forming DVT, deep venous thrombosis. So for them, drinking water a lot and throughout the day is crucial, especially if they have developed DVT recently. People with stroke, and they're still recovering, they need to keep drinking liquids and keep being hydrated. Lest you get dehydrated, and it may develop another DVT or another stroke. So the doctor knows better in this regard. And what would the sheikh, what would the deen, what would the Quran say? min ayamin One of two choices. Sometimes a person is If the sickness is something temporary and it is expected to uh, get better and the person to recover, in this case, you cannot give a defidia or feeding. Rather, you got to wait until you recover, then you start fasting. How many days you skipped during Ramadan? 15 days, no problem. After Ramadan, you fast 15 days throughout the year. But وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِرِيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ If your doctor said a person like you should never fast, take their advices, skip fasting, and give the fidya which is feeding one poor person for each day, he skip a Ramadan. 
And may Allah give shifa to all our brothers and sisters who are not feeling well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wayat from Norway. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abu Ayat, Abu Ayat, how are you? I'm doing good, alhamdulillah. Thank you. How can I help you? I have you? a question. Uh, the cattle footer. Uh, I'm just wondering, is it okay to send it the money or to uh, Africa or something like that? Because here I, we couldn't find anyone, but just only we can give to the mosque question. here. Abu Ayat, got your question. Sometimes in our locality in the States, we couldn't find any poor people. And as you know, that the zakah must be paid to Muslims versus voluntary charity, which you can give to Muslims and non-Muslims. So look around. Everybody has a house. Everybody has a car. Everybody eats well, dresses neat. So we send the zakah overseas. This is a legitimate reason which makes me send my zakah overseas. Secondly, if I know personally, I have some relatives who are in need back home in Africa. That's another legitimate reason. Thirdly, when there is a, cal a calamity, a catastrophe, a part of the ummah is afflicted, starving, hungry, and suffering in Palestine, in Burma, in, in uh, Syria, here and there, is it permissible to transfer the zakah money abroad? Yes, it is permissible for this reason to alleviate the pain and suffering. Remember, since zakat al-fitr, uh, it should be paid in the form of food, as we discussed many times before, you need to send your money right now so that the people can buy the grains, buy the rice, buy the, and distribute uh, upon the poor uh, before the Eid prayer. Thank you, Abu Ayat from Norway. And brothers and sisters, it is time to take a short break. We will be back, inshallah, shortly. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back my dear viewers uh, to the third and the final segment in today's Ask Koda program all the way from Mecca al-Mukarrama. Alima from Norway. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. I have a question. Please go ahead. I have a question. Uh, Sometimes I work with a non-Muslim, but I'm fasting. Um, I give I give the food, and that is okay. Yeah. What what kind of job do you do? I'm I'm working in the in the in the hospital. In the hospital, right? Yeah. Some, yeah. Sometimes I have my well, colleague. If, if so you I, go, if I you give, work in I the give hospital. Food. If you work in the hospital, so it is permissible to serve food to people who are not fasting because obviously it's a hospital, but it is not permissible to serve pork or anything that has any of the pork products, as you know, that is not permissible. Thank you, Halima from Norway. May Allah bless you and your family. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Amina from the UK, welcome to Ask Koda Amina. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Please raise your voice, Amina. Yeah, um, Shaykh, please, I want to find out about Rakatayn al Fajr. Can I pray Rakatayn al Fajr, let's say 15 minutes before the Azan of Fajr, without waiting for my app to, for the um, Azan on the app? Then I pray the Rakatayn al Fajr and wait for the Azan and pray my Fajr prayer. Amina, you got your question. Amina is asking about Rakatayn al Fajr, which the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said about them in the sound hadith. Rak'ata al-Fajri khayrun min al-dunya wa ma fiha. The two units before Fajr are better than the whole world 
and what they contain. Uh, referring to the Sunnah before Fajr, and the Sunnah of any prayer is not permissible to be offered before the time has entered. And nowadays we know that the time has entered and the time is due through the apps, watches, uh, alarms. So if on your app it says it's already Fajr time, Allahu Akbar and pray the Sunnah. But if you pray before the time, it's voluntary prayer and it's not the Sunnah. Each prayer, its Sunnah is related to its time, whether before or after. If you pray the Sunnah before its time is due, it's invalid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Aisha from Nigeria, welcome to Ask Uda. Aisha, Assalamu alaikum. Well, let's take another caller from Pakistan. Ajiba from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Welcome to Ask with Ajiba. How can I help you? Are you still in Mecca? Assalamu alaikum. Um, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, indeed. Lucky me. Can you pray for me? That I was in Khana Kaaba as well. How old are you, Ajiba? Eight years old. How old are you? Eight. Eight May old. Allah make it easy for you, Ajiba, to come to Mecca, visit the Kaaba, and see it, and touch the black stone very soon. Ameen. May Allah make it easy for you to perform Umrah and Hajj and your family members. Thank you, Ajiba from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, okay. Sister Aisha from Nigeria, welcome to Ask Wada. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Aisha. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm a big fan of Aisha. Wonderful, alhamdulillah. How can I help you today, Aisha? Um, I have a one question, Yashi. Uh, please, if a woman who is uh, menstruating and can't go to the mosque, can she, if she has a mosque next to uh, Unfortunately, you started breaking up your but, voice. Started breaking up, Aisha. Can you hear me now? Come close to your phone, please. Use your handset. Okay, can you hear me, Aisha? Okay, I will try. Yes, go ahead, Aisha. Try again. Can a woman who is on her period and has a moth next to her house? Well, it's very unfortunate. I listen to the I, 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 I do apologize, Aisha. Connection, your connection is not really clear. What you can do is type your question right now and inbox me or send it to ask at huda.tv. If I receive it during the session, I'll be more than happy, inshallah, to answer it. Otherwise, next session, which will be, inshallah, on Saturday. We have three more sessions Insha'Allah in Ramadan. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Monday, uh, most likely I will be traveling, Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. So we'll see if we can. If Ramadan is still on Tuesday, then Insha'Allah we'll have our final session on Tuesday. Otherwise, you can send your question right now in writing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amin from the UK, welcome to Ask Uda. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I want to ask a question. Uh, if I don't do tahiyyat al-masjid because I feel that um, 
or maybe some people say, oh, I need to sit down because the uh, show is about to start. Is that considered a or is it worse than that? Abibi, when it comes to the prayer, do what you have to do and ignore anyone around you. Tahiyatul Masjid is an emphatic sunnah. You should not sit in the masjid before giving Tahiyatul Masjid. And you should not decide to quit any worship or to change it out of fear of riya. Because this worship is exclusively for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not doing it for people is actually worse than riya is shirk. Okay, you enter the masjid, do not sit down before praying. If it is already a prayer time, fine. Sunnah, before a prayer time, fine. If not, then you should not sit down before Allahu Akbar intending to pray to independent rakah of tahiyyatul masjid. You want to prolong them, you want to shorten them, ignore anyone who's around you. And keep in mind that you're facing Allah. And when you say Allahu Akbar, you really mean it. Allah is the greatest. Greater than anyone who maybe the hawa or the whim or shaitan is convincing you that this will be a show off or to please people. Greater than anything in life, than life itself. Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad from South Africa. Welcome to Ask Uda Muhammad. Hello. Yes, Muhammad, I hear you. Yeah, Assalamu Alaikum. Alaikum Assalamu Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. She I was want to ask you something, ne? And I'm here to answer you. Go ahead. What is your something? Okay. Yeah, if you fast in eh? yeah. if you fast and you wake up early in the morning and you brush your teeth with, for the cold gate, is it right? So Muhammad from South Africa is asking about what is the ruling on brushing your teeth while fasting. It is permissible. Just make sure that you spit what is in your mouth after you brush your teeth. Thank you, Muhammad from South Africa. Hiba from Australia. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Salam, sir. How are you? Go ahead with your question, please. Yes, I hear you. All right, sir. Uh, I have a question about cat impurities. Go ahead. Um. So. Um, I've had my cat for two years, and uh, recently I've noticed um, once he urinates in the litter box, um, once he goes and sits down somewhere, he leaves like a slightly, a slightly dead uh, spot. Uh, uh, so I do apologize, in... Hiba. It sounds maybe you're calling, you're using a speakerphone. To me, the sound is not clear. I will be able to answer in two conditions. If I know the answer, and if I hear the question clearly, if I don't hear the question clearly, I'm not going to guess it. You want to try again? Yeah, hang on a second. Are you using a speakerphone? Okay. No, no, it's just my mobile phone. Can you hear me now? Okay. Turn the speaker phone off and just use your handset. Okay, are you able to hear me now? Better. Bismillah. Okay. Um, so I, I've got a cat. Um, and he uses the litter box to urinate because he's an indoor cat. Um, I've noticed after he uses the litter box, he'll go around the house. And once he sits down like on the tiles, he'll leave like a slightly damp spot. Just um, uh, just like a very s a slightly damp spot. So, Heba, um, Heba, Heba, are you asking about your cat? Yes. Okay, and you're asking about the purity and the impurity, correct? Yes. Okay, keeping a cat at home is permissible, and the Prophet 
as the companions, not to kick them out of the masjid, they said, إِنَّهَا مِنَ الطَّوَّفِينَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَالطَّوَّفَاتِ Cats are completely different than dogs. And if you have a place for them to poop and to uh, relieve themselves, they use them. And in this condition, even though the house is tired and clean, I always prefer to use Janamaz or prayer rug in order to avoid the allergy and because I put my nose and forehead on the floor and to be certain of the purity of every spot that I offer the prayer on. But it is permissible and they are clean and the Prophet وسلم, as the companions not to kick them out of the masjid. I believe I can only take one more call before we conclude. Aisha from Aisha from the USA. Salam alaikum, Sister Aisha. Aisha. Yes. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, brother. My son. My son gonna talk to you. Aisha, what is your question, please? Yeah, go ahead. What What is your um, son's hi, um, name? Yeah, is it haram to be a doctor in um, the United States? Of course not. Of course not. It is not haram. Rather, with a good intention, it is a great deal. And you will be definitely rewarded for, in addition to making a bunch of money. So being a doctor anywhere, helping people, Muslims and non-Muslims, is definitely permissible. May Allah bless you. Just make certain, inshallah, when you become a doctor, you keep in mind to be merciful with the patients who cannot afford it, with your relatives, with friends, who uh, maybe trust that you're going to take it easy on the payment uh, for them and so on. Brothers and sisters, by that we've come to the end of today's edition of Ask Kuda. We ask the Almighty Allah to pardon us and forgive us all our sins and to grant us kabul, acceptance, and success. I mean, aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ulaik. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama taslima kathira. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته